Hey guys, I'm back with another custom ROM review for the Nexus 4. As you can see, it's PSX ROM, that stands for Pure Speed Experiment. I've been hearing loads of good things about this ROM, so yeah, let's go ahead and test it out. So straight off the bat guys, this thing is fast. It's definitely one of the fastest 4.3 ROMs I've used on the Nexus 4. The PSX team really put emphasis on speed and performance and you can really see that in their ROM. It opens apps very quickly. There's no lag whatsoever. I was going through the menus as quick as possible. It's a very stable and lightweight ROM as well. There's not too much customization, but it does have some I'll go through a little bit later, but it is blazingly, blazingly fast. By default, this ROM has some customization to the quick toggles you can see right here. There's more of them, for example, screen off, wireless access point, and the torch. If you scroll to the top, you've also got a brightness slider and a toggle for automatic brightness, which is always nice to have. It also comes with a kill all button on the recents. You can just press the recents and press the X and all your apps in there will just be wiped away and you can start afresh. Moving on to the customization. And like I said a little bit earlier, this ROM isn't packed with customization. It does have some nice features, but it's not gonna come with stuff like Halo and Pi. It's a bare bones ROM that just concentrates on speed and performance. You can see here, you can mess around with the battery status style. You can have an icon, a circle, all that sort of stuff. You can also change the quick settings. You can choose different options here, more columns, less columns. You can also change what tiles actually show up and which ones you want to use. In the navigation bar, you can add a persistent button. And you can see here, I added a persistent menu button just to test it, it does work. Obviously by default, it just has the normal stock three buttons. You can also change the navigation bar height if you want to make it smaller and get some more screen real estate. Underneath that we got lock screen shortcuts and this allows you to have a shortcut on your lock screen. You can have pretty much any application you want. I'm just going to choose Gmail here just to uh, show you exactly what it does. Once you're done, make sure you hit save in the top right hand corner. Lock your device and when you unlock it, you'll have an option to unlock straight to the shortcut you just made. You can see I can go straight into my Gmail. It's a pretty awesome feature to have. If we dive back into the settings underneath that we have quick launch shortcuts and this is your Google Now shortcut so you can add two different ones you can see right next to them. If you go into these you can pick for example toggle torch. Again don't forget to hit save and you can quickly toggle your torch just by scrolling up like you would access Google Now but swipe slightly to the left and you can turn off your torch as well. So again that's a cool feature to have. Lastly, we have the volume rocker and this is pretty standard stuff. You've got the uh, volume rocker wake and the music controls as well. That's pretty much it in terms of the customization. I should also mention the ROM doesn't have root pre-installed so make sure you flash that before you boot the ROM otherwise some of this stuff won't work. It does come with Nova Launcher as the stock launcher, so you've got all the options to mess around with the desktop, the draw, and the dock, and all that cool stuff. It also has a custom power menu. You can see you've got reboot options. For example, you can reboot straight into recovery or fast boot. You do have expanded desktop mode, but you don't have anything to navigate, for example, Pi or anything like that. So make sure you have something installed like LMT Launcher, otherwise you'll just end up turning it off and going back to the normal view. So moving on to some benchmarks and this ROM has a lot of optimizations like Delvic optimizations and Bionic optimizations. It makes the ROM blazingly fast but let's see how it does in the benchmarks. So there you have it, you can see it scores basically 7000 straight out of the box and this is without something like a custom kernel so it may even be possible to score higher but nonetheless it's a very fast ROM. Next up we got Antutu and this is obviously a better benchmark than Quadrant so let's see how well it performs right now. Like I said before this doesn't have a custom kernel or anything like that so you may even be able to get better performance. You can see the GPU right here seems to be about 51, 52. I know if you're on other kernels you can hit 59 or possibly more so yeah. So here we go and we've scored 20,142 which is a very good score like I said without a custom kernel. These benchmarks just seem to back up how fast this ROM is. It's a blazingly fast ROM. If you're into pure speed, this may be the ROM for you. So there you have it guys, that's the PSX ROM. And like I was saying, this ROM is very clean and very simple. So much so that it doesn't even have a lot of live wallpapers. You can see it only has phase beam, so it really is pretty much bare bones but it is blazingly fast. It's definitely worth a shot if you haven't tried it before. It's easily one of the fastest, if not the fastest 4.3 ROM right now. 